How many of you here are writing fiction? Can I see a show of hands? Fiction writers? Okay, so pretty much almost everybody. And if you're writing nonfiction, of course, you can use a lot of fiction writing techniques uh, in your nonfiction. So I'm hoping that tonight you'll learn some interesting things. This is normally a two hour talk, so I'm going to be sort of skipping over a lot of the different um, techniques, cinematic techniques that we normally would cover. But um, I do have the book, which has a lot more information in there. So in case this is a topic that interests you, if you want to pursue uh, learning more about shooting your novel, then you can uh, check out my book. Our challenge as writers is to be able to put down on paper these scenes that we're seeing in our heads in as much detail or succinct detail so that the reader can picture what we picture. However, part of the beauty of fiction writing and reading is that we have this relationship with our reader. And that is sort of like a combined do-it-yourself adventure. So when we write uh, a scene, for instance, the reader fills in a lot of the details with her own imagination and, and what she pictures. This is one of the reasons Stephen King doesn't usually do much character description, because he figures if he talks about some bubblehead named Tiffany, you'll have your picture of what that Tiffany will look like, and it will fit the scene better than if he went into a lot of detail about what Tiffany looked like. So, and that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing for us to allow the reader to picture what um, what they're, how they're seeing the scene play out. But at the same time, as writers, we want to manipulate the emotions of our readers. And I mean this in a very positive way, because the purpose of writing fiction, and possibly, or more than likely, nonfiction as well, is to evoke emotion from our readers. We want to evoke a specific emotional response on every page, in every scene, and that is our job, is to make sure that our reader comes up with the emotion that we're hoping or wanting them to get. We don't want them to just react uh, to a scene in their own random way and, and it misses the purpose of what we have. So the purpose of shooting your novel or shooting your scenes is to think more specifically about how you're going to use your camera and use that camera to manipulate your reader's attention. In other words, if you want your reader to see something and to pay attention to it, you want to get close up on that item. It's sort of the Hitchcock rule is what they used to call, call it back in, when Hitchcock was filming movies. is when he'd want you to notice a clue, all of a sudden the camera would come up really close onto the person's watch or something. And it was basically screaming, pay attention to this, this is important. So we want to do the exact same thing in our uh, fiction writing. We have to ask some important questions before we sit down to write a scene. How much or how little detail do I want to put in the scene so I can help the reader see my story in the way that I see it? And how much should I leave to the reader's imagination? <clears throat> and then how can I best write each scene so that I show the reader what I want him to see? And then how can I write these scenes that will give me that emotional impact equivalent to what can be conveyed in a film? So these are uh, challenges for every writer. Saul Stein on writing said that 20th century readers transformed by film and TV are used to seeing stories. The reading experience for the 20th century reader is increasingly visual. The story is happening in front of his eyes. And of course that's true for the 21st century. Um, and we're also told often that we need to show, not tell. But we're never really told how to do that. You know, everybody says, okay, show. Well, what does that mean? How do you show? If you, you know, back in the old days, like if you watched a Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers movie, you know, they'd set the camera up in one spot and you'd watch the whole dance scene and usually they'd have to do it over and over. Well, they probably never had to do it over and over, but uh, they'd do it all in one cut. They wouldn't really edit and do different camera angles. But the old days, you know, TV when it first started was really meant to emulate Broadway or emulate plays. So, they would set a camera up and they would just film it. And the problem with that is you only get this one angle. And it's great if you're just watching a dance number, although I personally like the close up on the feet or whatever. Uh, so, you know, today, of course, movies, dance movies are gonna be different. But we don't wanna be stuck with this one camera type of um, attention on our scenes because then again, we're, we're just sort of leaving it up to our reader to decide what they're gonna pay attention to. 
So since I don't have a whole lot of time, I'm just going to kind of zoom through some of these different things. There is a handout that talks about the different camera shots, and my book goes into all of them. And you know, as you're writing your scenes or plotting out your scenes, I want you to think about how you might choose, pick and choose these different camera shots. And what you need to be aware of as well is that when you're filming a movie, you don't just have one camera shot. You have a series of shots. They're called segments. There's like different uh, uh, little segments that piece together to make the scene. And uh, with film editing, you'll notice a lot of times, especially with high action, if you're watching like a Die Hard movie or something, you know, every three seconds you have uh, an edited clip from another camera angle. You know, you might have a camera angle on the person's face and then the car wheel as it's screeching around a corner and then the helicopter getting blasted out of the sky or whatever. But these are all segments and you can do the exact same thing when you're writing your scenes and you can storyboard out your scenes. So you can lay out like how you're going to do your shots and we're going to look at some, I'm going to read some examples of just, you know, some little passages from best-selling novels so that you can see how these different shots kind of go get, get put together.